Hi guys, Dan Hendrickson here. Welcome back to part two of Through the Eyes of an Amateur. Now in this series, what we're doing is myself and Lee Whitaker, 12 handicap golfer, we're out on the golf course. I'm playing the golf, but Lee's telling me how he would play the shots. So I'm not doing anything different from what Lee's asking me to do. I'm trying to keep it as simple as I possibly can. I'm currently one over par. Let's get out on the golf course now and take a little look at how I get on in part two, which is over the next three holes. Right, Dan, this is okay. my worst nightmare. Not into wind. Into wind. Driver, spinny player. Yeah. Um, so I would be hitting driver, yeah. but I would be choking down the club. Choking down? Yeah. Right. Uh, and doing like a punch shot driver and trying to do a low draw, low hooky draw, and just let the wind out of play and let it run down the fairway. That's what Lee's now, doing. this will be interesting because I've never hit that shot with a driver before. It's called the low, low hooky draw and punch grip down. and grip down shot, yeah. I've trademarked it. There's a lot going through your head. <laughs> and I'm hitting a draw, like a trap draw. Yeah. Ball position, is that going back a bit? Or where's that? Um, I'm kind of, I always keep my driver in the same place. So just forward? Yeah. But you're going to try and trap it from there, yeah? Yeah. Drawing off that right, big right tree exactly like that Dan I've just taught you a golf shot I've literally just taught you a golf shot Lee, Lee Whitaker golf PGA what is in your head <laughs> what is in there <laughs> Well, that was an interesting setup. Now, what I find absolutely fascinating about this is I know that Lee is a high ball flighter, should we say, and he spins the ball quite a bit. And it's something that we've worked on a lot in our coaching, um, certainly in the last winter process that we went through. But Lee comes from a golf course that is extremely windy. It, it, it blows up, up at Whitsand Bay all the time. If you've had a chance to have a little look at our course vlog, please do. We played 18 holes around Whitsand Bay, which was on last week. But for Lee to be playing around with shots like that, I find really quite interesting. And, and actually, in a way, I kind of... I like that he's doing it. It's not a shot that I've necessarily gone to. It's a shot that I play when I use with irons, but never really messed about with it too much with certainly going into woods. Maybe people have seen it in hybrids, but for Lee to be playing around and experimenting with shots like that in the windy conditions at Whitsand Bay, you know, I just, I actually, even though I was a little bit confused with what he was trying to get me to do there, I, I like what I see after it. I think it's actually a good shot and it's a shot that people can learn. Um, just purely from the senses, you know, understanding how to control ball flight. I think that's a very good thing that Lee is doing to experiment with that. I actually turned that all right, so I might be practicing that one myself. So you've got 109, yeah. um, you've got 56, 60 and then pitching wedge. Yeah. So I'd be hitting a pitching wedge and it would just be a knockdown, sort of punch into the, punch into the green with this wind. I'd, oh. What's your pitching wedge? 120? Yeah, 120 to 125. 109. No, I've changed my mind, you're going 99. You're going 99, there's a yeah. bit of wind there, isn't there? Yeah. Okay. So you're hitting a knockdown 99, trying to land it 115. Ball position? Uh, so just back of centre. Down the shaft a little bit, we like this down the down, shaft. Down the grip, yeah. Yeah, not like that far down, just sort of centre of the grip. Yeah. Okay. And then just straight at it, you want to land it about 115. You're going straight at that pin, yeah? Yeah. No, you're not taking into consideration any contours on the green no, or where the lead? No, because I, I don't know the green, so I just pin seek. We're going straight for the pin. All or nothing golf, I call three it. Three quarter swing or half a swing? Uh, your, your 115 shot with a nine, so three quarter punch shot. Feel free, like, uh, literally, to sign me up as a caddy. <laughs> Do you know what it is, though? What, like, rightly or wrongly, I, it's hard. This is hard to do this, everybody, because like I'm trying to hit that straight at the flag, but I know how much the contours of the green are. 
So there was a, a part of me on the way down that I've just pushed it a little bit out to the right hand side to allow for that. I do apologise, I can't help myself. Well, it's right, but it's just hard. Part. It's hard when you're trying to play these shots when you know in your mind it's yeah. hard to then react to it. Um, yeah. But Happy anyway. birthday. Let's go. <laughs> so second shot in there, nice controlled flight coming in there. What I wanted Lee to do was start to think about the green a little bit. You know, if Lee wants to get down to that low handicap that I know he wants to get down to, he needs to start taking into consideration researching golf courses before you go and play it. I know we're having a bit of fun out there, but researching golf courses, understanding the slopes on the green and giving yourself those uphill parts is only gonna help your game or his game moving forward. Fantastic sort of vision from him there, hitting that low ball flight coming into that shot. Three quarter swing with a nine iron just worked out really, really well for me. Let's uh, let's see if I can hold the putt. Okay, um, we're going for birdie, so we're going to be positive with the putt. Yeah. And I've got it a cop outside of the right. Cop outside, positive. What is your positive? <laughs> Like, how, how far past are you thinking positive? Um, I'm happy a foot past. That's only six inches past. <laughs> it's a tapping oh. par though. And you're a foot had, past. Thought we had that. Yeah. Thought we had that one. Good read by your caddy though. Oh, interesting tee shot that, wasn't it? So unfortunately didn't make the birdie there, but I think again, Lee giving me a very good read. I just didn't quite give it the speed that, that Lee gets it. And this is where we've got to be careful when you, certainly when you get out on the golf course, if you're playing in a big event and you have someone caddy for you, be very, very careful when you ask them to start reading putts for you because Lee and I hit putts at very different speeds. Lee's a very positive putter. I like to sort of drop mine in at sort of six inches to nine inches past the cup there. But Again, if Lee had hit that putt on the speed that he probably hits it, I think we would have had that that time. Uh, right then, downwind. Yeah. Driver. Yeah. Straight down the middle of the fairway is your target. Okay. And just leather it because we are in max max chat mode so now. We're whacking again. Yeah. Going. Going. Going for it. Yeah. We want to be landing it <coughs> 270, 280, and then trying to get 100 yards of roll out of it. We're going for it here. Any shape or just straight? Just straight. Let the contours take it to the right. Bit like that, Dan. Yeah. That'll do, won't it? Good shot, Lee. Great shot, Lee. What 56 have we got? Fifty-six yards. Fifty-six. So Bush I am telling me fifty-six yards. So I am getting my sixty out. Yeah. And I am um, one hop checking it. 60, one off checking. Yeah. Just like. So I want to be low, landing. Going high, going I want to be landing it about 50 yards. Um, not too low, so it's kind of. You're landing it on, on the slope? What, what are you doing with that slope there? No, I'm going over that slope. You're pitching it over that slope? Yeah. You're, going, you're not going in low then? But at this point, I'd know, I'd like to hope I know if the greens are receptive or not. Yeah. Um, I know these ones are quite receptive from the course log we did. Yeah. So I'm trying to one hop stop it so we're not coming in low though we're coming in higher uh, a little bit high but sort of like medium trajectory not f like flopping it straight at it straight or? at it but it's released out so you've, well, you've got away with that strike got it a little bit in the toe for you i'm afraid that's all right you've still got a birdie putt yeah we've got a nice little birdie putt there so loving the aggressive approach by lee there hitting off the tee Second shot in, again, I want Lee to start thinking a little bit more about the way in which the greens contours. A massive slope in that green, a big, what I call Mackenzie slope that runs up from the front up towards the pin. I wanted Lee to see him kind of go in a lot lower there and skip it up the slope. He had to be very, very precise, trying to throw it above that slope and get it to stop on that top shelf there. There's not a great deal of green to work with. And if you get the strike slightly wrong, you end up what I did there, which was obviously either coming up just slightly short and not getting up to the top of that slope, 
or getting back to the pin. Or if you catch it too well, you go over the back and then you're properly short siding yourself. So I always like to see in that situation, you know, try and work up the slope. So get it landing on the front edge and let it release up the slope. So I would have been using sort of a pitching wedge or a 56 degree, keep it in nice and low and let it release up there. It's just making your percentages a little bit higher. Having to throw it all the way, you have to be absolutely spot on. At least going low, you can sort of get away with it a little bit more than what we did there. Right, my really amazing green reading eyes yeah. have got this dropping in off the left hand side. Off the so I'm moving that way. Yeah, from left so to I'm right. half a cop off the left and I want to be a foot past it. It's a birdie opportunity, so you right. I want to be taking Um so you're not taking in, in any consideration to the wind? No. I'd like to say yes now because you just mentioned it, but the honest answer is no I've not. Okay. So just outside left? Yeah. Well, you read it pretty much spot on. It's a tapping par. It's a good and right leave as well, so we got the pace. What? Another inch outside outside the left there, it would have dropped in probably. Very good. Great read that. Another really, really good read by Lee there. And I'm, I'm fascinated with Lee coming from a very windy, linksy course that he doesn't take into consideration the wind when he's putting. I just would like to see him sort of think about that a little bit more, maybe just another inch and we would have had that one. But again, I'm really, really impressed with Lee's reading skills at the moment. I think overall he's, he's actually got the game, let's say, in his mind to get out there and play some good golf. Right, Dan, we are hitting a four iron up here. Four iron? Yeah, it's 340 yards, yeah. it's downwind. Four iron is about 200 for me. <laughs> Um, so it's probably, I'd say, probably similar to you and with roll. Where do you want me to start it? It's 220. So I want you to be aiming at that, like, you see that colourful bush about here-ish? Yeah. At that, and okay. then the contours will bring it in to the right. Okay. Just a normal shot, no shape? No, just straight at it. Started out a little bit more to the right, but it should be okay. Yeah, it's just gone up past that bunker. Safer shot for the bottleneck. You can't. You're not really bringing the the bushes into play there, unless yeah, you you yeah, I, hook I it. I like it. I like it. It's a good play. So a very very good setup by Lee there for me, making me hit four iron. That whole kind of bottleneck's right in. So you've either got to be very aggressive and go through the bottleneck, or you lay it up just short. That four iron put me into a perfect position. So he's calculated that pretty much spot on for what we were trying to do there. Let's see if we can actually make some birdies out of this golf course. Right, done. 104, 104. 56 degree. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping you can hit this about 95 yards. Okay. And I want you to just hit a 95 yard shot, left, just left of the pin. Yeah. And let it release towards the pin because it's going uphill. High or low? Um, just normal height, a normal, normal shot, normal 95, shot 95 and then because it's uphill, the green should slow it down. Okay, 95. Now this club goes about 105, so just take a fraction off of it, okay? Just pushed it slightly to the right. It's got, it's got over the bunker. I just call the front right corner of that green. Yeah, just start it out a little bit too yeah, right. too far right, didn't do. Yeah, poor, poor strike really. So a correct shot for Lee there, what he chose for me to play, 56 degree, throw it up in the air, get it to stop a little bit because the pin's tucked at the front. So really, sometimes when I can go in a little bit lower, I don't wanna be doing that when I'm landing on the front of the green, so short of the green, because you get a bit inconsistent on those sort of fringes at the front, especially when it's a bit bouncy like it is right now. So I think absolutely the right shot was chosen by Lee there. Unfortunately, just a poor strike by me, left it out to the right hand side. Let's, uh, let's see how we get on from there. We're chipping this. Yeah, so we're chipping this 56. Yep. Okay. Um, the green is going to come in off the right. The, the ball's going to come in off the right. Yep. So we want to land it here, there, and let it release to the flag. You're and, throwing it here. Yeah. And then letting it release to the flag and drop in the hole. That's just your fault. 
just so much green to work with here. Beautiful lie, had a perfect lie there. Not landing it any further than a club length on. This is your point here. You, you're, you're giving up, like you're having to be so much more precise. It's no different when we throw the ball back to each other. Yeah. yeah. You've got to be, the further you go away from you, the harder it is to get that bit more precise. You've got to focus on trying to get that to land as close as you can. Do not waste perfectly good green. My thought with that, if I'm doing that, I'm using a 50. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, for you, it'd be a pitching wedge or because you don't... Or a 9-iron or something along those lines. Yeah. Well, we're... I've just picked that up, but we'll come back to that. But for me, I know I'm using a 56 here, but I'm de-lofting it to be like a 9-iron. But I'm just trying to get it onto that front part of that green and then let it just release up the green. See, that's not had a chance to go in, whereas yours did, that's why I did it that way. Yeah, but look, which putt would you prefer to have? Well, look yeah. Look at how much swing, like you've got an up, straight uphill putt here, but here, you've got a smelly downhiller. It's that, okay, don't get me wrong, it's, I've thrown it probably a foot past where you want it to land. It's that amateur whole everything mentality, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, being very aggressive yeah. in that situation. What's interesting though, is that how you're aggressive in in certain situations, but very held back and negative in other situations. Just can't lose a ball here. Eh? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Put that back to where it was. What we got? It's you want to go half a cup outside left. Yeah. And you want to just be dropping it in. Okay, dropping it in. So you're yeah. Dying this in now, yeah. Yeah, but you want to be. So you want? I'm aiming. You've got it over here, then, haven't you? Yeah, I've got it a, half a cup outside left, and I want to be about three inches longer than the cup like past the cup because the worst case is I've got an uphill. Okay. Proper dribbler. Three inches past the cup. Yeah. Proper dribbler, dribbler, isn't it? Like that. That, that literally would have finished three inches. <laughs> well Red, that's that's the type of putting I like from you. <laughs> So Lee and I have talked about this lots of times when we've done our lessons and it, so it surprised me a little bit that he was asking me to throw that ball so far up the green there for such a small shot. It was a perfect lie. I mean, he could have putted it. He could have hit a hybrid to play me little bumping putt shot, sort of shot from there. But for me to be throwing a ball that far up the green, it doesn't make any sense. I'm wasting all of that green. Now I talked about throwing a ball to each other. If you throw a ball further, further away you go, it gets it harder to be more precise. So for Lee to play that shot, he's talking about holding that shot, which I like the thought process, but worst case scenario, you've got to make sure that you get your, get your par and move on. In that situation there, I just felt that he was wasting all that very, very nice bit of green there. He could have popped a little nine iron or pitching wedge onto the front there and let it just then release up towards the hole. And like I said, I'd rather leave myself a three, four foot putt coming up the hill rather than that real smelly sort of uh, left to right swinger that we had there for our par. So what I'm seeing from this is that, you know, Lee's gonna come to me and say he's gonna shoot 41 points one day, but the next day he's gonna come back and say he shot 30 points. I'd rather try and see Lee get himself into a more consistent level where he's shooting averaging around 36, but he's got that good one in him as well. Him going down the line of trying to be so aggressive with small little shots like that, I just think he's gonna come a cropper every now and then. So there you go, there's the end of part two for you. You can see from what I've done there that I am now one over par still. I've shot level par for those three holes, but felt like I had some really, really good chances. I'm impressed with the way Lee is reacting on the golf course. In his mind, he's playing the shots. He's seeing the shots out on the golf course. And I actually see this in a lot of amateur golfers. And we'll summarize on that possibly when we finish at part three. But I see a lot of players that sort of can see the shots, but again, it's how you execute the shots from there. But all in all, so far, level par for those three holes, one over par in these very windy conditions. You know, I'm gonna take that. Remember, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing, and as always, stay safe, and I look forward to catching up with you again soon.